Hello everybody, my name is Jody Webster. I'm from the School of Geosciences. I'm part of the Geocoastal Research Group. Uh, and today I'd like to give you just a brief summary of the Science at Sea uh, seminar uh, and talk about some of the recent work we've been doing on trying to understand the evolution of the Great Barrier Reef uh, over the last 30,000 years or so. And so this is a, a, a tale of the life and death and recovery of the Great Barrier Reef on millennium and centennial uh, timescales. And just to point out, this is uh, not just my work, but the work of uh, many colleagues around Australia and around the world. So just give you a, a few highlights. Uh, so just moving forward, uh, this is obviously set in the context of thinking about what is the future of the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we now unfortunately have been uh, experienced a third bleaching uh, mass bleaching event in the last five years, and this raises considerable concerns about uh, the future of the reef and how it responds to major environmental um, perturbations and environmental change. Uh, and from a geoscientist, what we've really been thinking about is how the Great Barrier Reef has responded to major environmental changes in the past. And uh, this is a, a, a plot uh, in the middle here showing how sea level has changed over the last 400,000 uh, uh, years or so as the world has moved from glacial to interglacial. You can see the sea level going up and down, up and down. Uh, and in that time, the reef has been turning on and turning off. And much of what we know about how the Great Barrier Reef has grown is, has, come from, has come from drilling through the tops of the reef system. And as a result of that, we have a record of how the reefs have grown during these successive high stand periods. But we have a very little understanding of how the reefs have grown during lower sea level positions. And this is a really, really important period because it's a period of rapid sea level and associated environmental changes. And we can learn a lot about how the Great Barrier Reef responds to these sorts of changes. But to do that, of course, we need to be able to drill uh, on the edge of the continental shelf in much, much deeper water. And this is really where uh, IODP Expedition 325 came in, uh, which was to recover reefs from the shelf edge, these drowned reef structures, um, uh, and that's what we really tried to do. And so these were uh, three sites that were uh, the focus of study during IODP Expedition 325, and the goals of this expedition were to reconstruct a record of last glacial sea level changes, uh, understand tropical climate variability, and then also try to understand the past response of the Great Barrier Reef to these major uh, global climate changes to perhaps inform us about how the reef might respond uh, into the future on centennial to millennial timescales. And so um, just showing you this map, we have this large geographic spread from sites up in Cooktown, off Cairns, and then Hydrographer's Passage. And this is the ship that we used. This is a, a geotechnical drilling vessel called the um, Great Ship Meyer. You can see the drilling derrick uh, sitting there in the middle of the ship and the containers um, uh, aligned on the deck of the ship where a lot of the science and cores were collected and um, archived. But just to give you a view of what we were actually trying to drill, this is one of these um, quite spectacular, spectacular multi-beam sonar images uh, that was um, uh, recovered uh, prior to the drilling expedition. It was very, very important to understand the shape of the seafloor um, so we could target the scientific drilling effectively. And so this here you can see a whole series of of ridges or terrace-like features which actually represent um, uh, drowned reefs that were growing uh, from about 40 metres down to about 130 metres below present sea level. Uh, and so the goal was to, to bring the drill ship and drill a transect of cores uh, across the shelf uh, into each of these drowned reef structures so we could uh, try to record um, uh, the uh, record of how a reef changed in response to sea level environmental changes. And this is an example uh, of one of these beautiful reef cores that we were able to recover. Here you can actually see on the left here this, these different colors and shapes. These actually represent um, uh, 
uh, fossil corals and fossil algae, as well as internal sediments. And, and through an analysis of um, the different uh, biota, the coral types and forms, the, the different algae, different sorts of associated uh, biota, we're able to reconstruct very carefully a, a record of the environment that the reef was growing at um, at these different times and how it was growing, uh, what rate it was growing and the communities and the ecology and in fact the, the timing of when the reef actually um, uh, drowned and backstepped as it followed sea level. Uh, and so uh, just to give you some of the main results, so we're able to publish some of the main work um, uh, recently. The first, really on the left, uh, this is reconstructing how the reef uh, uh, responded or were able to identify at least five different individual reef sequences that grew in response to sea level uh, falling across the shelf and then as sea level rose following the end of the last ice age uh, as, as the reef system migrated landwards um, uh, following uh, sea level. Uh, rising above um, uh, and tracking towards the land. Uh, we're able to use those corals to reconstruct a very precise and comprehensive record of how relative sea level changed uh, during that period. And so this was uh, some of the work that was published in, in Nature um, uh, recently, which we were able to show uh, quite clearly this represents two different um, sea level curves that were built from a reconstruction of the fossil reef uh, at each of the different sites, uh, in this case over 500 uh, kilometers apart, and were able to show uh, very clearly the structure of how sea level changed during the last glacial maximum or the last ice age, showing that it was a two-step process into what is the what we call the full glacial maximum, and then as sea level rose and climate warmed, uh, uh, we're able to use the corals to reconstruct that pathway. And so this really revealed really important new information about uh, how sea level changed. But coming back to the reef story, uh, what we've been able to now, uh, future work is really focusing on understanding these processes of reef demise. Uh, where the sea level falls very rapidly and, and the reef is, ex is exposed, the reef obviously dies, and we have, uh, that's much, much easier to understand as the, as the reef um, uh, cannot live obviously above the water. Um, but we see these also really interesting um, so-called reef drowning events where the reef, for whatever reason, um, has not been able to keep pace with that sea level rise um, uh, uh, and, and basically gave up or drowned is, is the term that we use. And that's kind of uh, uh, interesting or, or an interesting natural laboratory to try and understand what might be happening with modern reef systems today as they face um, uh, increasing environmental pressure uh, from increasing sea surface temperatures, increasing uh, uh, sea level rise rate and magnitude, uh, potentially um, increased sediment flux and nutrients um, uh, and, and reductions in water quality. Uh, we can look at these reefs to try and understand exactly the reasons, the timing, um, and what environmental conditions they are exposed to, which caused their death. And we hope that that can inform us a little bit more about how the Great Barrier Reef um, will respond in the next uh, 50, 100, or 500, or 1,000 years uh, into the future. Thank you very much.